get up in the morning before he went to school, say about 4.30 or 5, and practice until it's almost time to get his breakfast and leave for school. And uh, he'd hurry home to start practicing again until way late in the evening till we, till we would tell him, you know. And he had a little studio built outside for so afterwards, where he could be out there with that. <laughs> Did he mostly just, just practice uh, scales and, and exercise? Yes, yes, and tone qualities and things. He'd blow one note for all day long. I've seen him blow one note on a saxophone for weeks at a time. And I've been out in the yard working at going and said, there's no more key in a saxophone but that one. And then he played, then he put on his tape recorder, then he, he listened to it. He said, that has got to be right. Say it's not right to me. No, it's not right yet. <laughs> He wasn't going to do anything else. Mm -mm. Can't hurt those hands. <laughs> discouraged with playing music and all? Yes, when he couldn't get any work. Yes. Did he ever stop for any period of time? No. no. Uh -huh. he, kept on, he kept on working at it because he figured, well, someday, somehow. He'd practice harder. Uh, he would make it, you know. He was learning to play this Tacoma Symphony. It was a problem. Um. Oh, what's this guy's name? Did, did you did you tend to, uh, to encourage him to, to be a musician? Or? Oh, I did at times, and at times I told him when it was going the rope going was rough, I'd say, finish up and get your degree and teach <laughs> instead of not for me. And he said, no, that wasn't for him. Well, I guess it scared you a lot. No, it didn't scare us. We just we just felt that you should make a good living, you know, other than just struggle. Even when he went to New York, he struggled because for what a year between jobs, you know. Did he start start making money at some point? When no, he never no because uh, uh, his best years was with Chico Hamilton. Financially, yeah. And then uh, after that in New York, he, he was freelancing. And he worked with different groups, you know. Or he would have a group himself. <laughs>
before he died, he was just getting up. He was just coming into his home. He was just coming into his home when he passed away. He was just coming into his home to be recognized. But things could have been so much better, it seems. Oh, it could have been better, but as we know, life is a struggle, and as I say, we are people that are used to struggling. It don't mean anything to us. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm just grateful that he lives on. People are think about him and, and he's still alive as far as his music is concerned. Thank <laughs> you.